Wow. Hi, everybody. Look at this. We're at Comic-Con. We're at Comic-Con. I love Comic-Con. <laughs> this is like the 30 minutes a year where I pretend to be a media professional who is not afraid of my fellow human beings. Um, we'll just see how this goes. Uh, I am Lev Grossman. I wrote the magician's novels. I wrote those things. This is Sarah Gamble and John McNamara. They are the creators and showrunners. Is that your correct titles? Creators and showrunners? Yes, creators and showrunners of The Magicians, the TV show. Also a thing. Um, and according to these cards that I hold in front of me, which I obey slavishly, we are going to um, talk about the TV show. Let's talk. Let's talk about it. Um, it's loud in here. Uh, all right. Um, OK, it's time to veer wildly off script. Um, that didn't take long. Uh, let's talk about the musical episodes. I know, I know. We're supposed to do a grounding and talk about what the show's about. We're not talking about that. I want to talk only about the musical episodes. We're going to talk about those for 30 solid minutes. Only 30 minutes? <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Tell me about uh, the, the musical episodes. They're divisive. They're polarizing. There is one per season. I hope we're going to be upping that in future seasons. The ratio. I'm upping nine musical to one, you know. And we need, a, we need one that's totally sung through, like an opera. I agree. And we just need a lot more money. Yeah, <laughs> good. OK. Not cheap. Um, I hope our sci-fi overlords are listening to that. More money for the musical episodes. Um, what was the, tell me the thinking by the musical episodes. Um, they're not in the books. The books are resolutely unmusical. Um, where does this stuff come from? I really think Sarah should answer these. It's all me, you guys. You're welcome. No. Um, what happens is John has been writing TV for, you know that 10,000 hours thing? Uh, where after, you know, you become an expert in your field. Yeah, yeah. John is, has been an expert in his field for a long time, so he's easily bored, I think. So mm -hmm. he goes off to write a script, and he wants it to be exciting for him. So he just adds musical numbers without telling anyone, and then he turns them in the day before prep, and they have songs in them. Nice. And it's too late to do anything about it. <laughs> now, I've never talked to the cast about the musical episodes. Are they, are they like, psyched about it? Are they, like, secret Broadway babies who are waiting to cut loose? Or are, they, are there reluctant singers among the cast? With two exceptions, and see if you can guess who the two exceptions are, it, the rest of the cast is a wavelength. Oh, my god. <laughs> Please write me out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm terrified. Oh, I love that song. All right, we'll just try this. Yeah. Can we do this again, but I do more? <laughs> and it then cycles back to one the next season. Is there a lot of auto-tuning that goes on? Actually, no. Uh, I'm, I am personally against it. Um, and I think you should sound like how you sound. And I think everyone on that show can sing, on our show can sing. Some are simply more practiced and polished than others, mm. but I sometimes really prefer a non-polished voice, you know? Yeah. Um, no names. <laughs> We're going to do something called The Trials. You are right for The Trials from the show. God. <laughs> um, and it says on the card that we're going to skip the nudity We'll just see how we go. We'll play that by ear, the nudity part. We'll just skip it by We'll play it by ear. We'll get I'm naked if it's important. we a lot of important. layers. We could just do one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, you guys the, know what spanks the, are, right? Uh, <laughs> Top to bottom. The trials demand absolute, absolute honesty. Naked honesty, you might almost say. Um, and the questions will not emanate from me. They will emanate from the fans from whom they have been harvested in advance. And I think that there's a video we have them on video. We have the questions on video? Right, so Let's play the first for question. John, Sarah, or any of the cast. If you had had more time or episodes in any of the seasons, are there any specific character interactions or moments that you would have liked to have expanded on more? Everybody get that? Yes? OK. Did you hear that? I mean, I always felt like we should have more sex on the ceiling than we're having on the show. But it has to be strongly tied to plot, or it will get cut. And we have a lot of plot, so more, more sex. On the ceiling. <laughs> if you would like 
anybody to elaborate on that, which is an even question. Some people might prefer not to hear that elaborated upon any further. Um, there will actually be a Facebook Live event with the entire cast. Um, I don't even know about this. There's a Facebook uh, a Live event on Thursday, October 18th. It's coming up. Um, so you'll be able to just have at them, you know, at will through the all-seeing medium of Facebook. That'll be good. All right, let's go to question number two. Question number two. Have what we stones were used in the crowns of the high kings and queens? Were they chosen for appearances only or their metaphysical properties? Wait, was what chosen for that. metaphysical properties only? Um, the stones in the crowns. Are they just, oh. are they there for looks, for like cosmetically? Or do they have metaphysical properties? I defer to Sarah, but I'll take the question. I don't think they have any metaphysical properties, do they? We, we picked... I don't know if you remember this. I think you were on this email thread. The four crowns each uh, align with one element. So there's a fire crown and a water crown and an air crown and an earth crown. The fire crown is Elliot's crown. So the metaphysical properties are just the elemental properties associated with uh, each crown. But we haven't had them do anything yet. Right. So, um, you know, call your senator, ask for a season five. <laughs> there you go. Um, and this is actually a good moment to mention that we are having a contest. You know about the contest? You probably don't know about the contest. There's a contest that we're doing with DeviantArt. You know DeviantArt. We're having a contest with DeviantArt. It's a fan art contest. It's an epic fan, it's an epic fan art contest. Um, the winners will be judged by Sarah and John themselves. I wasn't asked to judge. We're judgier than you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm judging everyone all the time. Um, you can go to sci-fi.com slash the magicians um, for more information on how to enter. Yeah, um, right. Uh, should we talk about a little bit about the overall sort of art direction of the show? Like, who does that? What goes into that uh, uh, to sort of creating the look of it? Well, Mar Margot Reddy is our production designer. She was, the original uh, production designer was Rachel O'Toole, um, who moved on. Um, and Margot's picked up the, the Excalibur and I think did an amazing job. Um, and then Magali is our costume designer and kind of saves us from men in tights. <laughs> this is my, my single greatest fear was just tights on guys. I have nothing against it, but I did not want to like do that. And she is just so creative. When she got her hands on Fillory, I think she just really came into her own in an amazing way. When you're dealing with fantasy, it's hard to um, avoid cliche, yeah. especially in the clothes. Um, there's just. You know, there's the robes, there's the armor. It's hard to give things a particular look. It's one of the great things about writing books is that you don't have to worry about that stuff as much. Right. Um, you just kind of describe things a little bit vaguely, and people fill in all this cool stuff in their heads. Uh, but in the show, you've got nowhere to hide. No. Um, Fillory is the only thing that worried me in season one, which is why we had so little of it, I think. And we were both just didn't quite know how it looked and didn't, we had so many other things to think about and juggle. That by the time we got to season two, we at least had our feet under us and kind of knew. I, I think we should have figured out in season one what not to do, bit by bit. And so season two, it was a little easier. But that's the, it's Magali and, uh, and, uh, and Margot are the two principals in terms of the look of the show. It's so interesting, like, one of the things that Magali does that I'm really impressed with is she'll pull practical references from different cultures and different time periods. There's always a thought process that's practical behind the ornamentation or the color scheme. Um, so she grounds it in a way that I think keeps it from feeling kind of random. Yeah. But when we first started seeing the, the early, early prototypes of the Fillory outfits, she was working with some, some um, things that tie on the side because there's no zippers in Fillory. And I had this moment where I was like, oh, this is how all those alien cultures on Star Trek happened, right? Uh, so the, the, I think maybe the only note we ever gave her early was like, be careful of Star Trek, because um, right. it can go there is more and, easily than you think. And less hats. Less. We're <laughs> she, super anti-hat. She's super pro-hats, <laughs> and we're super anti-hats. 
And Penny's Chest, we saw a lot of Penny's Chest in season one. Um, was that coming from you guys or Mugly or just universal desire for Penny's Chest? Arjun. That was Arjun. Yeah, got Arjun. <laughs> <laughs> was he stealthily unbuttoning buttons before each take? He's not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Um, are the cast into the clothes? Do they like getting dressed up? Um, I mean, I, I look at the clothes, especially the welters uniforms uh, and the Break Bill South sweaters. I love those sweaters. Mm -hmm. If I had an opportunity to like souvenir a costume stealthily from the set, I would go straight for those sweaters. We might be able to hook you up. Yeah, we'll get you a sweater. Okay. Okay, good. Those were controversial, the Break Bill South uniforms, because they're yeah, kind really? of basically like long johns. Mm -hmm. They're the under things for a cold Siberian winter. <laughs> uh, but mostly I want to steal everybody's everything. I'm with you. Um, let's, uh, we've got another fan video, I think. Question? Um, I think I've got my cards out of order. Um, apparently we have another, another fan video question. Let's, uh, let's roll that. Hi, so my question is, how does the library allocate magic equally? And does it abuse its power? How does the library distribute magic equally? It doesn't. They don't. They're no. horrible. Boo. <laughs> well, they're not horrible. Some of them are horrible. Let's give these people a story arc. <laughs> I just don't like libraries because I used to be a librarian in college. Seriously. This and is I the had first to time do I've heard this. It is. I had to do terrible things. Terrible thing. <laughs> wow, this is a. I didn't know. This is. Is this where this was all coming from? You wrote. No, you wrote the librarians. They, they were nice in the. They're nice ish in the, yes. in the book. Penny was a dick. <laughs> <laughs> I literally had to go to people's dorm rooms and be like, it's not knock, policy. Knock, knock. <laughs> it wasn't policy to be a dick. That just came from him personally. Um, but the librarians are sort of all dicks. I mean, they mean well. They, they just, their no, they responsibilities don't. have greatly expanded in season four, from shelving books to distributing all of magic. Yeah. So it helps if you have a library card. So I, I guess the, yes. the thing we can tease is it's a lot easier if you're from break bills or you're someone like Alice's mother than it is if you're people who might have hung out with Katie in yeah. New York. Hedge witches get squeezed out a lot in season four. Mm. Good to know. Um, I think we got one more. One more fan question. Six short stories about magic was my absolute favorite episode from season three of The Magicians. In that episode, we were introduced to a character, Cassandra, played by Olivia Taylor Dudley, who we all know as Alice. And I was wondering, are we going to get to see more of that character in season four? I don't recall. <laughs> that totally worked for Brett Kavanaugh. It's way too soon for me. I can't. Me too. <laughs> um, somebody said season four. Somebody said season four. Is there anything we can say about season four? What can we say about season four? Oh. More anything creation? to announce? Pardon me? Can we announce anything? Like guest stars, for example, people who might come back? Break some news? Can we break some news? Yeah, let's break some news. Would, would that be, wait, I'm break getting it. a mental image. You mean... You want to go on a date with me? No, the date of the premiere. Oh, that's <laughs> okay. Because we work together, so you know. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Let's announce the tell date the, of season four. Tell the four. people. I don't know it. You guys have to do it. Oh. You know I it? hope I remember I, it correctly. I, say, I, mem <laughs> I memorized it when I had a martini last night. So if, if I'm January wrong. January twenty third. January twenty third. You guys. That was going to be my guess. Will you, will you guys tweet at me with the cocktails you'll be serving at your parties? I'll retweet it because pe the people need your help. I think ours is a show best watched drunk, so. No, 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 hi. And I, I think we actually even have a couple of I images, a couple of screenshots from season four. Nice. What have we got? Let's see. That's it. That's season four. Uh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, do you guys want to hear a little story about this shot of Ember or a person who appears to be Ember? I've it's actually just... seen the scenes. The kittens just crush it. They're so good. They're so good. Yeah. They all live, you guys. Those kittens do not explode. That is about the number one. That's explode. <laughs> I hear about that a lot. The exploding the kittens? Exploding cat, which is not canon, but it's not book canon I don't anyway. I feel bad about it. They're not real cats, you guys. It's fiction. But the, the thing that I'll say is I, I wrote that scene 
with the, um, uh, uh, I don't want to spoil it. I mean, Ember is dead on the show, but there's a reason he's appearing to Janet in that scene. Uh, I, I just wanted him to be sort of saucy because he likes to lounge and be saucy. Yeah. I wrote the kittens in just because Dominic Burgess, who plays Ember, really likes cats. Yeah. And I thought he would enjoy the day in nine hours of prosthetic makeup if we covered him in kittens. Boy, so, and it, I mean, it paid dividends. It did. <laughs> um, what else can we say about season four that's happening? How's it going? The shootings, we're, 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 we're shooting. We're probably well into shooting at this point. We're shooting episode 11? Yeah. Uh, yeah, episode 11. We're we co writing the finale right we now. We're on page two. <laughs> you guys um, are it's part a really of good page. It's a good page two. It's real good. Any any new sets? What what did we, we what did we build? We had a we had a boat oh, yeah. last year that was great. Um, we could say yeah. we have possibly the most glamorous Manhattan penthouse since Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. I'm not kidding. I want to move into this penthouse. It is amazing, and it was stolen with magic. Let's say they use magic to steal it, so they don't pay rent or mortgage. Yeah. So the ultimate nice. New York fantasy. Yeah, no, no, oh my <laughs> God. It is a fantasy show after all. Um, did the cast like hang out, hang out on it and just sort of lounge around all the time? Kind of. Yeah. It's 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 totally like I mean the bathrooms don't work so uh. been a few errors there because they look really real, and the, the stove doesn't work but beyond that everything works. You can hang out. It's beautiful light and it looks it's great. Two stories. Wow, I have got to come out to set more. Yeah. Um, any grizzly onset injuries that you can report? I love that stuff. Wow. <laughs> Speaking of grizzly, okay. We shot possibly a musical episode, possibly in a desert-like environment, which was near the woods, and during shooting at night, two, for real, grizzly bears came out. Are you and serious? Had, for real. And the cast and the crew were warned, this is Canada, and we might get grizzlies. And the cast was like, ha, 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 that's very funny. And next thing you know, they hear this loud growl from just outside the lights, and we had grizzly wranglers ready to go who could push bear. them back or throw them meat or I don't know what they did. But schnapps. They, they, they like schnapps. They a bear horn. Yeah. Some of the dailies are kind of fucked up because there's a bear horn. Oh, totally. So we're going to have to loop all the dialogue. Yeah. But on the plus side, you know, Summer Bischel didn't get eaten by a bear. I think it's worth it. <laughs> All right. Um, we're entering the final phase. And the final phase, of course, has to do with that 20-sided die you see in front of you in its little sort of 20-sided die caddy. Um, we are going to roll for questions. I will not be choosing the questions. The gods will choose the questions through the medium of that 20-sided die, which you will roll. Um, and I have a list of questions on my cards Are here. Are you going to answer them too? Sorry? Are you going to answer them too, or you're just asking the questions? I can neither confirm nor deny that. <laughs> Depends on your rolling. Um, uh, uh, so let's, let, let's do it up. Let's get a, let's get a, let's get a roll going. 20. Damn. Natural 20. No, not even any modifiers. Um, then question number 20 is, how many typos would you say are in the average text message that you send, assuming that you send text messages? Zero. <laughs> I rely to an embarrassing extent on emojis, which cuts down. <laughs> um, uh, okay, keep going, keep going. I'm not going to reveal my own typo count. Four. No, that's not going to do, that's, that's, you're not going to hit anything with a four. Um, number four, it is a magical headmaster rumble. It is. It is a magical headmaster rumble. You are, uh, are you betting on Dean Fogg or are you betting on Dumbledore? Who's Dumbledore? <laughs> oh, <laughs> boom. <laughs> that made me sad when you said that. <laughs> that made me so happy to say. Sorry. Dean Fogg, and here's why. Dumbledore really cares about people besides Dumbledore. Fogg is more self-interested. He's very reluctant to care about other people. I think always bet on the selfish one. There's a lack of empathy uh, somewhere in, in Dean Fogg. Um, but is it sober Fogg or drunk Fogg? Because drunk, we see a lot of drunk Fogg. We'll be seeing a lot of drunk Fogg, right? He doesn't get oh, less yeah. drunk. Yeah, he does. <laughs> it only, the arrow only points one direction for Fogg. Um, uh, 
Uh, is he more effective when you say drunk or sober as a spellcaster? It's hard to say at this point. I don't know. I mean, he maybe has been sober once or twice on the show, but right. he, I don't think he's fully sober all season. <laughs> so he's good enough. Okay. So Mayakovsky, I mean, maybe it's better to just be drunk. Yeah. Um, let's roll. Let's keep it rolling. Seven. Seven. Okay. What is Quentin's greatest weakness? Goodness, we're going to be here all night. <laughs> <laughs> what is Quentin's greatest weakness? Mm. I would seriously I would say it's his lack of self-esteem. He has a real lack of, he has, a, he has an inability to really appreciate and see his good qualities. He constantly will say, oh, I'm this, and then undermine it. And then I guess and then undermine it. And I think it's, a, it's why he's such an interesting character to write. He doesn't settle on one feeling. He's defined by ambiguity, which I really like, and ambivalence. You think he should go back on the meds? Oh, no, 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 no. You think no. he's OK? No, no, he's fine. He's fine. <laughs> All right, roll. Five. Wow, we have not repeated anything. Um, who is cooler, obviously subjective, Penny or Arjun Gupta? Um, Arjun Gupta is cooler than Penny 23. <laughs> Is he cooler than Penny 40, OG Penny? That to me would be like a, a, a wash, like a tie, because now Penny 40 is on another plane. That's really cool. So. Penny, Penny 40, he's pretty cool. He's far below body temperature at this point. Yes. He's um, really you guys cooled down. You want to hear a totally unauthorized spoiler? I like broke everybody's head in the writer's room because I really, really wanted both Pennies to be in a scene together. I was like, I know one of them is dead. Just figure it out. <laughs> wow, I can't believe you let that drop. Penny on I'm Penny not, Action. I'm not confirming or denying that that scene exists in season four towards the middle of the season. It does. <laughs> <laughs> Last time I looked, it was our show till they fire us. <laughs> Yeah, okay, one more roll. Show me what you got. Is it a nine or a six? Six. That's a, you're right, six. Um, all right, you've, you've pinged the other Quentin question. What is Quentin's greatest strength? Oh, okay, so the answer that popped to mind is so sincere. I apologize in advance. But it, I think it's his heart. I think it's that he really cares about his friends. That's the thing that enables him to kind of move beyond the idea of like, I have to be the hero of the story. That is so often characters like him, so often their downfall. I mean, he is alive, for, still alive on the show, I think, because he loves the people around him and he relies on them. I thought you were gonna say his hair. It's on his hair, his beautiful hair. I mean, handling continuity for his hair yeah. in a season where we go back and forth between seasons. Uh, we do a lot of flashbacks in, in season four, and we see and and realizing what has happened to his hair <laughs> over four seasons. <laughs> it's a lot of extensions and his, wigs and his, his stuff. His hair's greatest strength is the hair and makeup department. Yes. <laughs> I no, love the hair. They it's just very, have to constantly change it, and it's really hard. It's I mean, very it's true to the book hair. That's just the hair that I had in my head when I was writing him. Um, and that is actually true. Um, the numbers on the countdown clock have turned red, which means we've got to take this out. Sarah and John are going to transform into geese and fly back to Vancouver. But it's really gross. You don't want to see it happen. We're going to do it backstage. Um, thank you guys all for coming to this. Um, it was super fun. Thank you, guys. And uh, yeah, tune in you. on what was Thanks. the date? January something? 23rd. 23rd. Yeah. January 23rd. We'll see you then. Bye. Thanks, guys. <laughs>